Twelve years ago, I became an assistant coach for the Sackville Bantam AA Flyers after a chance encounter with an old Pee Wee coach. Quickly fell in love with it. There's no greater joy than helping a young person achieve success. Without children at that time, I was like an outsider of all of a sudden on the inside of this intense hockey world that connects the families of every player on the team through good times and bad. I met parents, siblings, friends from other teams, and watched the head coach bench a kid whose grandparents made the trip up from Cape Breton to watch, and he benched him for the entire game. I did not agree with that, but I've since sent that same message a few times. I'll never forget that first team. It was like a roller coaster ride that ended with a provincial championship and had a really special overtime goal. The celebration picks from that final tournament will never get old. Twelve years later, I am still connected to many members of that team. I'm grateful for how they welcomed me into their lives and were so willing to help me in mine. Looking back at those first couple of years, I would say I was a terrible but really fun coach. Although the kids loved us, I'm not sure we did much for their development, but it soon became a passion. I learned a lot and had a knack for explaining the game in a way they could understand. I completed Hockey Canada's High Performance Coaching Clinic, and the Bantam AA Flyers became a machine. Every player had a role and felt like an important part of it. You respect your teammates or you are out. It's just that simple. Although we were good in Bantam, I felt we needed to be better, so I accepted a nomination for our VP development. In this role, I was able to work with kids of all ages and skill levels for the first time. Coaching a Bantam AA player is quite different than helping a six-year-old stay on his or her feet for more than three strides. I'm not sure which is more rewarding, but I think the smiles are the same when the milestones are reached. In this role, I even designed our new logo because the old one just didn't look right on the front of a hat. With our Bantam AA team winning nearly every game we played, I was invited to help with the Hockey Nova Scotia High Performance Program. This was a great experience and I became connected with many great players and families throughout the entire province. Many of these players now play in the QMJHL and NCAA. It has been fun to coach and stay connected with them through their journeys. I was sure Hockey Nova Scotia Minor Council would eventually retire my coaching tracksuit one day, although I didn't think it would be in this fashion. One thing I'll never forget from that experience was the running joke during team selection. You better tell those Sackville kids not to wear those orange socks so they can give themselves a chance. I laughed, but did not find it funny. I am a Sackville kid who grew up wearing those orange socks. In a nutshell, the joke was alluding to a reputation of being poor teammates, players, and parents, being uncoachable, and having a hard time being mentally tough. I am proud to have made strides to erase this reputation through association bonding events like our incredible All-Star Weekend and year-end banquets, glorifying our MVT, Most Valuable Teammate, providing a sense of community during our garbage cleanup day, and overseeing the implementation of our growing mental health initiative. I can only hope our next president will continue to promote an all-for-one attitude and can recommend that a season-opening kitchen party is not the way to go. From here, I landed a coaching job at the major midget U18 elite level with the Valley Wildcats. Driving the 101 to Berwick three to five times per week landed me as many speeding tickets as suspensions. I swear the refs and highway patrol were in cahoots. So many Sackville kids played in the Valley for the next three seasons that people joked they should be renamed the Valley Flyers. Those orange socks did not go unnoticed at those triads. Speaking of orange... My parents made the front page of the Valley Harvester after a reporter no noticed them delivering the team orange slices before every game. Although they probably don't know, I am thankful for their dedication as super fans for the Flyers and beyond. I thoroughly enjoyed my time at this level. I learned a lot and saw how well connected this elite hockey community is. Getting to know the other coaches, scouts, and organizers was a thrill and fun to be part of. Hearing from a player on his NHL draft day was also a thrill. And I'm very proud to see a Valley boy named Drake Batherson make a name for himself as an NHL sniper. Go Drake. If that wasn't enough hockey for one person, I had to become president during my first year in the Valley. How else could I stay connected to Sackville? 
My motivation was to remove the politics of team selection, improve development, and a desire to bring that special team environment from my own teams to the entire association. We were in a very bad way on all fronts. I believe I have brought great changes to every level in our association. Our rep teams compete against all others because of the consistency of the skill development model in our association-wide core systems helps give our association an on-ice identity that is more than being sackville grease. Our rec teams propel the development of the entire association. The coaches involved who embraced that shift to the skill model have done an incredible service. It was the first opportunity I had to be on the ice with our rec teams. It is one of my favorite experiences in hockey to date. This skill development model for both rec and competitive levels has led to a drastic improvement in the fundamental skills of our players. I am proud to have been at the helm for our first and only Development Association of the Year Award from Hockey Nova Scotia. I appreciate the coaches who stuck with it through the growing pains to see it through to what it is today. I hope the coaches continue to provide feedback and roll with whatever additions come at them each year. Novice half ice in small area games was another hard transition, but Sackville was at the forefront. Implementing our cross ice three on three a couple of years before Hockey Nova Scotia made half ice hockey mandatory at this level. I was proud that Hockey Nova Scotia asked me to deliver a presentation at their AGM to introduce it to the province. But seeing how much pushback there was, I now believe this was a setup. The addition of our skill instructors to our IP program this season was long overdue and a necessary part of our model to improve season to season consistency and to keep up with the neighboring associations who have already been doing so. They are there to help both players and new coaches with their intro to our program. Our tryout process is stressful for all, but it is a very fair, unbiased assessment that removes as much political selection as it possibly can. I'm proud to have made continual improvements from year to year. As for the all-for-one association attitude, I encourage everyone to simply celebrate each other's success and support each other when in need. Find a way to promote and be happy for the success of your teammates. Push each other to be better in a positive way and motivate one another. Be kind and helpful to everyone in the rink. Recognize when things go wrong for a teammate and be there to help pick them up. It is truly this simple and the only thing missing before we reach our full potential. My time as president has come to an end and has encompassed a lot more than those above three items. I have likely made almost as many bad decisions as good, but I do not regret any, as you can only grow as an association by trying and assessing new programs and procedures. I am proud to have enough guts to keep pressing forward with new items to help our players. I do regret that our members cannot read my mind, however. My advice to the new president and new coach is coming along as well. Get a bulletproof vest. Make friends, not enemies. The rink staffers pretty much make the hockey world go round. Treat them with respect and contact me for the Christmas list. Referees do have a heart. No eyesight, but there is a heart there, so be gentle. Returning players should never be cut. Hotel slip and slide is a thing if you're prepared and quick to disable the track and your players will love you for it. 50-50 has brought our players over $2 million and counting. You're welcome. Keep it going and buy Leah a yearly gift of appreciation. Learn to communicate effectively. Don't let people who are nowhere to be found during meetings, surveys, or decision times use the word transparency. This must be earned. A group of dedicated, intelligent, and hardworking hockey moms can put together the best end of year banquet this side of Montreal. Our players' development as human being is your number one priority. The last five minute rule is for dinosaurs. Coaches have the entire game to make an impact. Put the most deserving players of each game in opportunities to succeed. They never seem to disappoint for you recognizing their efforts. The number 17 has a special place in our hearts. Don't ever forget that it does not belong on a midget jersey unless we are in hockey heaven. Find out where Perry's Corner is and who it is there for. Don't forget to pat others on the back so they know 
you appreciate them. Speaking of, Mike Elliott is also moving on from his position with Sackville Minor. I think everyone should know what an asset he has been to this association over the years. Mike was always there whenever and wherever needed, just as long as he didn't have to take any credit. For everything from coaching, tryouts, decision-making, and development weekend chaos management. This credit is long overdue, and your support and helping hand is greatly appreciated. Juggling an elite coaching job while volunteering as president and life in general has been extremely difficult. Make no mistake, this was a sacrifice beyond what many could imagine or recognize. But in doing so, I have gained 10 plus years of memories and lasting relationships. Watching a new team's worth of players grow into young men and making a connection that keeps them all a part of my life to this day has been a privilege that I hold close to my heart. I have given much of my heart to this hockey community. Some of you have been there the whole way and understand the big picture. I appreciate the support for the projects we took on and am thankful for the many memories that were created along the way. As many of you know, I am being removed from hockey by Hockey Nova Scotia after willingly leaving the bench instead of wearing a mask, violating the mask policy at a later date, and apparent problems with views I share on my personal Twitter account. I'm okay dealing with the consequences of my stance against the grain. I was well aware that it would be a very unpopular stance and would have gladly ducked out of the season as president, but once given the go-ahead on such short notice, I did not want to leave the association high and dry. We were able to get the season started in a great place. It was a lot of work. We gave the kids the best opportunity they could have. I want to thank Rob Blackwood for taking over as president and dealing with the daily grind. You did it with integrity, passion, and patience, although Kathy may not agree. You're the one who walks on water, my friend. But there is a part of me that enjoys the entire association has heard that you think that about me. This is a complex and touchy subject, so I understand if you do not agree with or fully comprehend my point of view on the subject that has led us here. But please trust that my beliefs and actions come from love for our country, our way of life, and the people that make us truly Canadian. Our experiences shape who we are, and my experiences make it clear to me that we are going through a manufactured event to shift our way of life into something that is worse for you and me and much better for the powers that be. The science and statistics do not support the implementation of one, two, or even three masks for anyone of any age or any of the government restrictions, especially the removal of the basic needs for our children to thrive. Our children are being conditioned to be afraid of each other, denied the right to play with each other, or even hug their loved ones without the overhanging threat of harm. I cannot support this. Unfortunately, the consequences of my actions are steep, but some things are worth putting everything on the line for. A future for our children that includes the right to be in control of their own life is one of them. It is encouraging to find more and more people seeing this global situation for what it is and realizing that hanging on for just a little while longer with hopes to return to normal, does nothing but keep us in a position to be dragged toward this new normal that includes nothing but a loss of freedom and necessary dependence on a Canadian government that doesn't seem so Canadian anymore. The only way forward to a normal that resembles the one we remember is for everyone to break free from the unwarranted fear and start believing in ourselves to seek and understand the truth as opposed to trusting what we see and hear on TV without thinking critically. If we do so, there is a much better normal than the world we ever knew on the other side of this, in my opinion. With that, I've said too much, but that is the reason why I'm no longer your president. So I hope you can understand my point of view, even if you do not share it. I also hope that you appreciate my contributions to this hockey community over the past decade. It was a pleasure to be a part of it, it will always be a part of me. Take care, everyone. Go Flyers.